This is a quick video over adsorption, and in this video we need to find the minimum number of adsorption batches needed to remove 97% of B from water. We are told that we have 8 liters of water that contains 0.072 moles of B. We are also told that we have 180 grams of absorbent, and we need to find the variables KEQ, ST. We are told that we are given a hint, so that would imply this is the hint for that part, or this is the hint for that part. Part B is your boss would like to know if anything can be done to use less batches besides adding absorbent. So uh, we are given the equilibrium information on a graph and we're also giving it given it in a table. But before we even start doing anything, let's start off by just writing down what we know. We need to find find the number of batches batches to get 97% of B out, 97% of B. We also need to find KEQ and ST. ST is the total number of sites there is per gram, and KEQ is just the equilibrium constant. So we are also given Q, the volume of the water, and that is 8 liters and S, which is the amount of absorbent we're given, that's 180 grams. And with that, we can now make some assumptions. So we can assume, assume that it is isothermal because we are only given the equilibrium information at 298 Kelvin. So we assume it's isothermal. So thermal. Next, we need to assume that it's, if it's, is it a linear isotherm? are a Langmuir isotherm, because those are the only two equations where you can find KEQ and ST, is with a Langmuir isotherm or a linear isotherm. So this one is linear up to about maybe right there, and then you can see it starts to flatten out up here. It might go up there that way, but you see it starts to flatten out. So I believe it is safe to assume that it is a Langmuir isotherm. So we're going to assume it is a Langmuir isotherm. And again, that's just because it's linear in the beginning, and then it flattens out, isotherm. Next, we need to put equations. What equations will we be using? Equations. So to solve it graphically, we need the mass balance equation. Or actually, to solve it numerically, we also need the mass balance equation. And we also need the equilibrium equation. So the mass balance one is pretty easy. That's just QB is equal to the volume of the water divided by the total amount of absorbent times the concentration of B initially minus the concentration of B in the water. And the equilibrium one's a bit more complicated. So since we're assuming it's a Langmuir isotherm, then that means QB is equal to KEQ times the concentration of B times ST all divided by 1 plus KEQ times the concentration of B. So what's the first thing we can do? Well, let's start off by finding what KEQ is and ST. So how do we do that? Well, let's look at our hints. Our hint is that it's either 298 Kelvin or that is at 1 mole per liter. The, uh, mol the units for that are given right there. One, at 1 mole per liter, the concentration of B on the absorbent is 0 0.00509 moles of B per gram. So one mole per liter is a very large concentration. So if we have a very large concentration, what does that mean? Well that means KEQ times the concentration of B is much, much greater than one. So what that means is this equation simplifies down to just Q B is equal to KEQ times the concentration of B times ST all divided by just KEQ times the concentration of B. So these two cancel and what we're left with is QB is equal to ST. So when the concentration of B is very high QB is equal to ST. So that means this is equal to ST. So we found ST. ST is equal to is equal to 0 
one moles per gram. So that's how many oh, that's how many total sites there are. Next, we need to find KEQ. So to find KEQ, what we can do is just simply solve for KEQ in this equation, or we can just derive it real quick. Remember, KEQ is equal to whatever is bound divided by whatever is in the water, the concentration of water, times the total number of open sites, so open. And remember, open sites is equal to the total number of sites as t minus the sites that are bound. So we can plug this back into right there, and what we get is KEQ is equal to QB all divided by CB ST minus QB. And if you were to solve this equation for uh, KEQ, you would get this equation. So let's do that. Let's just pick some random number. And if you picked anything, overall what you'd see, this is approximately 5,000. You might get 4,987, but overall it, it's, it's approximately 5,000. And QB is in moles per gram, and that's all divided by CB, which is in moles per liter, times ST, which is in moles per gram, minus QB, which is again in moles per gram, so what that means is this is in liters per mole. So then KEQ is 5,000 5, liters per mole. So now that we have KEQ and ST, what we can do now is move on to finding the total number of batches we need. And I'm going to do this graphically, or you can do it analytically where you just make these two equations equal to each other and then find out what the concentration of B is but I want to do it analytically because I think it's a little bit better. So let's find out the initial concentration of B. C, B, not. Well, that's just equal to the moles. So we have moles of B also. And that's equal to 0 0.072 moles. So moles. So that is 0 0.072 moles divided by 8 liters. And that is equal to 0 0.009 moles per liter. So if QB is equal to 0, QB is equal to 0, that means CB. To make this 0, CB must equal CB naught. So that means this is equal to 0 0.09 moles per liter. Now, how do we find what QB is? Well, that's when CB is 0. So if we were to make a line, we'll find where it intersects this axis. So that's when this is 0. So that's just Q divided by S times CB naught. And what we get is get 8 liters divided by 180 grams times the concentration of 0 0.09 moles per liter and that is equal to 0 0.004 right there. So now if we connect the dots uh, connect the dots this will be the concentration of B in the liquid after one batch. So this would be our first batch. Batch 1. So then if we go straight down and repeat the process with this being the new initial concentration. So CB not 2, we'd find the uh, concentration of B when it's all on the the adorbent, and we'd have our new line something like that, and we repeat the process. So let's find the concentration we actually need. So we need 97 percent of B removed. So to do that, all we have to do is multiply our initial concentration of B times 0 0.03. And what you would see is it's about a third of 0 0.01. So we need to go right there. So if we were to do this really precisely a couple times, what we would see is we'd get a line like this going down. And again, these two lines have the same slope. We're still using the same amount of water and we're still using the same amount of adsorbent. So the slope is not going to change because QB is equal to Q over S times CB naught minus CB. So all we're doing is we're changing this into CB2 and then CB3. So if we were to do that our next line might look something like that. So we would see we would need one, two, three batches. 
So the number of batches we need is equal to 3. Now the last question we have is your boss would like to know if anything can be done to use less batches besides adding absorbent. Well remember this is only at 298 Kelvin. If we lower the temperature our system might instead look something like this. Because if you lower the temperature more B will be able to be on the solid because it won't uh, want to pop off as easily. There's less energy for it to want to pop off. So then our new batch, our new first batch, might be right here. So then if we go straight down and go at the same slope as this line right there, we would see that we would only need we would only need two batches. So we can we can do this by lowering lowering the temp, the temperature of the system. And again, that's because if you decrease the temperature, B will not want to pop off the absorbent as easily.